Hello, in this video I will show you how to set up a Minecraft 1.19 server in Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, and Arch-based Linux distros. The first step is that you need to you need to download Java 17. To do that in Debian and Ubuntu, you're going to use this command. Um, all of these commands will be in the description below, so you can copy and paste them. For Fedora, you're going to use sudo yum install java 17 open jdk x86 64. And for arch, you use this command. Then you want to make sure that java 17 is the version of java that you're actually using. So to do that, you're going to use this command right here on Fedora, um, Ubuntu, and Debian-based distros. For Arch-based distros, you use this command right here. Now you want to download the Minecraft 1.19 server jar file. So to do that, you want to go to this website, which I'm going to have a link to in the description below. And then down, this website provides a link to the to the server jar on Mojang's website. So just click the download button, and it'll download. So now you have the server jar file, and you can basically put this wherever you want. I recommend putting it on a folder in your desk on your desktop. Um, you I don't just whatever you do probably don't you don't want to keep it in the downloads folder just just because um it's going to make a whole bunch of other folders and files so it's going to make them it would make a mess in your downloads folder. Now you want to run this command and what this will this will just r try to start the server but it won't be able to fully start the server because you have to agree to the EULA first. So inside the EULA, you just set um, false to true, and then you save it. Um, now we can actually run the server, but and to do that, you use the command java-xms. The xms is the smallest amount of RAM that your server has so I recommend using one gigabyte for that. XMX is the maximum that it's able to use, so I would recommend using two gigabytes for that. And then you just then dash jar server dot jar. I also recommend using the no GUI option. What this will this will get rid of a GUI that will pop up and all that the GUI really shows you is your RAM usage. Um, so I'm just gonna run it like that, and now it'll create some new folders and some new some new files and in here. The main file that you need to be concerned with is probably the server properties file. Um, in here, you can change PvP to false from true. You can change the difficulty, and you can change the view distance. So if your TPS is really low, you might you'll probably want to lower the view distance. And now the server is running. So um, at this point, anybody on your LAN can connect to your server um, as long as you don't have a firewall enabled. Um, if you do have a firewall enabled, I'm going to leave a link to a um, article in the description for how to open the ports on your firewall. Um, if you want people that, who are not on your LAN to connect to your server, you have to go into your router and configure port forwarding. So the way that you do that is you go to your router. Um, so as you can see up here, this your router address is going to be something similar to this. Sometimes that one at the end gets replaced with a zero. Sometimes the zero right there gets replaced with a one. Um, there's a lot of different ones. You'll probably you might you can probably find it by just looking up your router company name and then looking up how to connect to router. So now that you're in here. You, the first thing you need to do is you need to you need to set up a feature called address reservation. Um, most of the time you'll be able to find it here in the in a, something like the network map and the client section of that. 
and then you're, you you want to find your computer and then there should be a settings wheel next to it and then from there you can make sure that it, you can assign an IP address you would want to probably you would want to assign it the IP address it has right now so that it always has that IP address and that's important for making sure that that the port always gets forwarded to the correct computer um in this router I have it's in a different section so I just I'm just going to use the search bar up here and go to address reservation Um, I'm not going to save it, but if you if you were actually setting up a Minecraft server, you would want to save that. So now I'm going to set up the now I'm going to set up the actual port forwarding. So for port forwarding, well, you have to you just you just click the add button. And you have to normally you'll have you'll have to name the service, so you can just name it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Then you have to use the IP address. So this is the IP address that you set on the last page in the in the um, the address reservation page. I'm just going to use this view connected devices feature. And then for the external port, you're going to use two five five six five. And then for the internal port, 25565. For the protocol, choose all if you can, but sometimes you can't choose all. In that case, just choose TCP. And now, normally, you would save this. Um, now, to connect to the server, for people who are for people to connect to the server, the IP address that they use in the server the server IP section is your IP address. This is your um, your public IP address. You can find this by looking up by looking up what is my IP in Google or just any other web browser. Um, and you'll take and you'll find a website called whatismyip.com and you can just you can just see it that your I, your public IP address there. Um, this can change, so if people are having trouble connecting to your server, make sure that that your IP address, your public IP address is still the same. After that, you put a colon and then the port that the server is on, so 25565. And so now, as long as the server is running, um, you can connect to the server.